Act Five of the Love Tiff by Moliere, translated by Henri Van Laun. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One, Mascarille alone. As soon as darkness has invaded the town, I will enter Lucy's room. Go therefore and get ready immediately the dark lantern and whatever arms are necessary. <sighs> when my master said these words it sounded in my ears as if he had said go quickly and get a halter to hang yourself but come on master of mine for i was so astounded when first i heard your order that i had no time to answer you but i shall talk with you now and confound you therefore defend yourself well and let us argue without making a noise you say you wish to go and visit lucille to-night yes masquerie and what do you propose to do what a lover does who wishes to be convinced what a man does who has very little brains who risks his carcass when there is no occasion for it but do you know what is my motive lucille is angry well so much the worse for her but my love prompts me to go and appease her but love is a fool and does not know what he says will this same love defend us against an enraged rival father or brother do you think any of them intend to harm us yes really i do think so and especially this rival Mascari, in any case what i trust to is that we shall go well armed and if anybody interrupts us we shall draw yes but that is precisely what your servant does not wish to do i draw good heavens am i a roland master or a ferragus you hardly know me when i who love myself so dearly consider that two inches of cold steel in this body would be quite sufficient to send a poor mortal to his last home i am particularly disgusted but you will be armed from head to foot so much the worse i shall be less nimble to get into the thicket besides there is no armour so well made but some villainous point will pierce its joints oh you will then be considered a coward never mind provided i can but always move my jaws at table you may set me down for as good as four persons if you like but when fighting is going on you must not count me for anything moreover if the other world possesses charms for you the air of this world agrees very well with me i do not thirst after death and wounds if you have a mind to play the fool you may do it all by yourself i assure you scene two valere mascari i never felt a day pass more slowly the sun seems to have forgotten himself he has yet such a course to run before he reaches his bed that i believe he will never accomplish it his slow motion drives me mad what an eagerness to go in the dark to grope about for some ugly adventure you see that lucille is obstinate in her repulses a truce to these idle remonstrances though i were sure to meet a hundred deaths lying in ambush yet i feel her wrath so greatly that i shall either appease it or end my fate i am resolved on that i approve of your design but it is unfortunate sir that we must get in secretly very well and i am afraid i shall only be in the way how so <coughs> i i have a cough which nearly kills me and the noise it makes me betray you every moment <coughs> <coughs> you see what a punishment it is you will get better take some licorice i do not think sir it will get any better <coughs> oh, i should be delighted to go with you but i should be very sorry if any misfortune should befall my dear master through me <coughs> scene three valere la rapiere mascari sir i have just now heard from good authority that erast is greatly enraged against you and that albert talks also of breaking all the bones in mascarille's body on his daughter's account i i have nothing to do with all this confusion 
what have i done to have all the bones in my body broken am i the guardian of the virginity of all the girls in the town that i am to be thus threatened have i any influence with temptation can i help it i poor fellow if i have a mind to try it oh they are not so dangerous as they pretend to be however courageous love have made a ross day he will not have so easy a bargain with us if you should have any need for it my arm is entirely at your service you know me to be at all times staunch i am much obliged to you monsieur de la rapiere i have likewise two friends i can procure who will draw against all comers and upon whom you may safely rely accept their services sir you are too kind little giles may also have assisted us if a sad accident had not taken him from us oh sir it is a great pity he was such a handy fellow too you know the trick justice played on him he died like a hero when the executioner broke him on the wheel he made his exit without uttering a word monsieur de la rapiere such a man ought to be lamented but as for your escort i thank you i want them not be it so but do not forget that you are sought after and may have some scurvy trick played upon you and i to show you how much i fear him will offer him the satisfaction he desires if he seeks me i will immediately go all over the town only accompanied by mascaril scene four valere mascari what sir will you tempt heaven do not be so presumptuous lack a day you see how they threaten us how on every side what are you looking at yonder i smell a cudgel that way in short if you will take my prudent advice do not let us be so obstinate as to remain in the street let us go and shut ourselves up shut ourselves up rascal how dare you propose to me such a base action come along and follow me without any more words why sir my dear master life is so sweet one can die but once and it is for such a long time i shall half kill you if i hear anything more here comes oscanio let us leave him we must find out what side he will choose however come along with me into the house to take whatever arms we may want i have no great itching for fighting a curse on love and those darned girls who will be tasting it and then look as if butter would not melt in their mouth scene five ascanio frosin is it really true frosin do i not dream pray tell me all that has happened from first to last you shall know all the particulars in good time be patient such adventures are generally told over and over again and that every moment you must know then that after this will which was on condition of a male heir being born albert's wife who was enceinte gave birth to you albert who had stealthily and long beforehand laid his plan changed you for the son of inez the flower woman and gave you to my mother to nurse saying it was her own child some ten months after death took away this little innocent whilst albert was absent his wife being afraid of her husband and inspired by maternal love invented a new stratagem she secretly took her own daughter back you received the name of the boy who had taken your place whilst the death of that pretended son was kept a secret from albert who was told that his daughter had died huh. now the mystery of your birth is cleared up which your supposed mother had hitherto concealed she gives certain reasons for acting in this manner and may have others to give for her interests were not the same as yours in short this visit from which i expected so little has proved more serviceable to your love than could have been imagined this inez has given up all claim to you as it became necessary to reveal this secret on account of your marriage we too informed your father of it a letter of his deceased wife has confirmed all 
pursuing our reasoning yet farther and being rather fortunate as well as skilful we have so cunningly interwoven the interests of albert and of polydor so gradually unfolded all this mystery to the latter that we might not make things appear too terrible to him in the beginning and in a word to tell you all so prudently led his mind step by step to a reconciliation that polydor is now as anxious as your father to legitimize that connection which is to make you happy ah Rosine, what happiness you prepare for me what do i not owe to your fortunate zeal moreover the good man is inclined to be merry and has forbidden us to mention anything of this affair to his son scene six polydor ascanio frosin come hither daughter since i may give you this name now for i know the secret which this disguise conceals you have shown so much resolution ingenuity and archness in your stratagem that i forgive you i think my son will esteem himself happy when he knows that you are the object of his love you are worth to him more than all the treasures in this world and i will tell him so but here he comes let us divert ourselves with this event go and tell all the people to come hither immediately to obey you sir shall be the first compliment i pay you scene seven mascari polydor valere misfortunes are often revealed by heaven i dreamt last night of pearls and strung and broken eggs sir oh, this dream depresses my spirits cowardly rascal valerie an encounter awaits you wherein all your valor will be necessary you are to cope with a powerful adversary will nobody stare to prevent people from cutting each other's throats as for me i do not care about it but if any fatal accident should deprive you of your son do not lay the blame on me no no in this case i myself urge him to do what he ought what an unnatural father the sentiment sir shows you to be a man of honour i respect you the more for it i know i have offended you i am to blame for having done all this without a father's consent but however angry you may be with me nature always will prevail you do that which is truly honourable in not believing that i am to be terrified by the threats of araste they just now frightened me with his threats but since then things have changed greatly you will be attacked by a more powerful enemy without being able to flee from him is there no way of making it up i flee heaven forbid and who can this be ascanio ascanio yes you shall see him appear presently he who has pledged his word to serve me yes it is he who says he has a quarrel with you he who is determined to decide the quarrel by single combat to which he challenges you he is a good fellow he knows that generous minds do not endanger other people's lives by their quarrels he accuses you of deceit his anger appears to me to have so just a cause that albert and i have agreed you should give ascanio satisfaction for this affront but publicly and without any delay according to the formalities requisite in such a case what father a and did lucille obstinately lucille is to marry eraste and blames you too and the better to prove your story to be false is resolved to give her hand to eraste before your very face oh this impudence is enough to drive me mad has she lost then all sense faith conscience and honour scene eight albert polydor lucille eraste valere mascari well where are the combatants they are bringing ours have you prepared yours for the encounter yes yes i am ready since you compel me to it if i at all hesitated it was because i still felt a little respect and not on account of the valor of the champion who was to oppose me but i have been urged too far this respect is at an end i am prepared for any catastrophe i have been treated 
so strangely and treacherously that my love must and shall be revenged. To Lucille. Not that I still pretend to your hand. My former love is now swallowed up in wrath, and when I've made your shame public, your guilty marriage will not in the least disturb me. Lucille, your behavior is infamous. Scarcely can I believe mine own eyes. You show yourself so opposed to all modesty that you ought to die for shame. Such reproaches might affect me if I had not one at hand to avenge my cause. Here comes Ascanio. He shall soon have the pleasure, and without giving himself much trouble, of making you change your language. Scene 9. Albert, Polydor, Ascanio, Lucille, Eraste, Valère, Frosine, Marinette, Gros René, Mascari. He shall not make me change my language, though he had twenty arms beside his own. I am sorry he defends a guilty sister, but since he is foolish enough to pick a quarrel with me, I shall give him satisfaction, and you also, my valiant gentleman. A short time ago I took an interest in this, but as Asanyo has taken the affair upon himself, I will have nothing more to do with it, but leave it to him. You do well. Prudence is always timely, but... He shall give you satisfaction for us all. He. Do not deceive yourself. You do not yet know what a strange fellow Ascanio is. He is blind to it now, but Ascanio will let him know in a little while. Come on, then. Let him do so now. What? Before everybody? That would not be decent. Are you making fun of me? I will break the head of any fellow who laughs. But let us see what Ascanio is going to do. No, no, I am not so bad as they make me out. In this adventure, in which everyone has put me forward, you shall see my weakness appear more than anything else. You will discover that heaven, to which we must all submit, did not give me a heart to hold out against you, but that it reserved for you the easy triumph of putting an end to Lucille's brother. Yes, far from boasting of the power of his arm, Ascanio shall receive death from your hands, nay, would gladly die, if his death could contribute to your satisfaction, by giving you, in the presence of all this company, a wife who lawfully belongs to you. No, even the whole world, after her perfidy and shamelessness. Ah, Valere, allow me to tell you that the heart which is pledged to you is guilty of no crime against you. Her love is still pure, and her constancy unshaken. I call your own father himself to witness that I speak the truth. Yes, son, we have laughed enough at your rage. I see it is time to undeceive you. She to whom you are bound by oath is concealed under the dress you here behold. Some question about property was the cause of this disguise, which from her earliest youth deceives so many people. Lately, love was the cause of another which deceived you, whilst it made of the two families but one. Yes, in a word, it is she whose subtle skill obtained your hand at night, who pretended to be Lucille, and by this contrivance which none discovered, has perplexed you all so much. But since Ascanio now gives place to Dorothea, your love must be free from every appearance of deceit, and strengthened by a more sacred knot. This is the single combat by which you were to give us satisfaction for your offense, and which is not forbidden by any laws. Such an event amazes you, but all hesitation is now too late. No, no, I, I do not hesitate. If this adventure astonishes me, it is a flattering surprise. I find myself seized with admiration, love, and pleasure. Is it possible that those eyes... This dress, dear Valère, is not a proper one to hear your fine speeches in. Let her go and put on another, and meanwhile you shall know the particulars of the event. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, Lucille, if my mind dupes by... It is easy to forget that. Come, these compliments will do as well at home. We shall then have plenty of time to pay them to one another. But, in talking thus, 
you do not seem to think that there is still occasion for manslaughter here our loves are indeed crowned but who ought to obtain the hand of marionette his masquerie or my grosne this affair must end in blood no no my blood suits my body too well let him marry her in peace it will be nothing to me i know marionette too well to think marriage will be any bar to my courting her <laughs> and do you think i will make my gallant of you a husband does not matter anything will do for that we do not stand then upon so much ceremony but a gallon should be well made enough to make one's mouth water listen when we are united by marriage i insist that you should turn a deaf ear to all sparks do you think brother to marry her for yourself alone of course i will have a virtuous wife or else i shall kick up a fine row ah lack a day you shall do as others and become more gentle those people who are so severe and critical before marriage often degenerate into pacific husbands make yourself easy my dear husband and do not have the least fear about my fidelity flattery will produce no impression on me and i shall tell you everything oh what a cunning wench to make of a husband a confidant hold your tongue you knave of clubs for the third time i say let us go home and continue at leisure such an agreeable conversation end of act five end of the love tiff by moliere translated by henri van laun